Your lungs are amazing. Their surface area is the size of a tennis court and they take in all of the oxygen that your body needs to survive. Today, we're gonna to look at how they work. to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmathetici.com. In the previous video on blood vessels, we saw that capillaries allow oxygen to diffuse out of the blood and into the body cells where it's used and they allow carbon dioxide to diffuse out of the cells and into the blood. This CO2 needs to be removed from the blood and the oxygen needs to be replenished. This happens in the process of gas exchange, which takes place here in the lungs. You need to know the structure and adaptations of the lungs, so let's start by labelling this diagram. Why not pause and see how many parts you can already name? Well up here we have the nose and the mouth, and those bring air into the body. And then here we have the trachea or the windpipe. This has rings of cartilage to keep it open. It then branches into the bronchi or bronchus for singular, which then itself branches into bronchioles. At the end of the bronchioles, we've got tiny little air sacs called the alveoli. We'll look at these more in a second. Over here, we've got the ribs. They make up the rib cage, which protects the lungs. And between them are intercostal muscles. These help move the rib cage. And finally down here, we've got the diaphragm. This muscular tissue also helps with breathing. Now let's look at the adaptations for gas exchange. Here is one alveolus. This is where gas exchange takes place. And you can see that it is surrounded by a capillary. The first adaptation is that it is ventilated. This means the air is actively brought in and out of the lungs. This helps maintain a steep concentration gradient as fresh, oxygen-rich air is brought into the lungs with each breath. Gas exchange then takes place and the CO2 that entered the alveolus from the blood will then leave with each exhaled breath. Secondly, it has a good blood supply as it's surrounded by a capillary network that covers 70% of the alveolus. Let's look at what's happening in the blood. The blood that arrives to the alveolus has got a high concentration of CO2. This diffuses out of the blood and into the alveolus where it has a lower concentration of CO2. The blood that is arriving also has a low concentration of oxygen, whereas the alveolus has a high concentration of oxygen. That means it diffuses out and into the blood. This maintains a really steep concentration gradient as the blood quickly transports that new oxygen away, and that keeps that diffusion gradient going. Our third adaptation is that the walls of the alveoli are very thin, providing a short diffusion pathway between the air and the blood, so it's much faster. If we take a look at the shape of the alveolus, we can see it's a spherical shape and it's tiny, so they have a large surface area to volume ratio. This maximizes the rate of diffusion. Now that we've looked at gas exchange in humans, we're going to briefly look at it in fish. You may have already covered this with your teacher in topic one when learning about diffusion. Fish get their oxygen from water, which only holds very low concentrations of oxygen. They therefore need a really efficient gas exchange process. Here's how it works. Water enters through the mouth of the fish and then passes over the gills, which are inside the body. It then leaves by a special flap called the operculum. Gas exchange happens in the gills. The diagram below shows you what the gills are made of. These are stacks of filaments, and these help provide adaptations. The first is that the filaments provide a large surface area. They also have a good blood supply with lots of capillaries along them. The gill filaments and capillaries are just one cell thick. That provides a shorter path for diffusion. And they are ventilated as water containing oxygen is actively moved over the gills. And finally, they maintain a counter current. 
This just means that the blood moves in the opposite direction to the flow of the water. This is good because it maintains a steep concentration gradient for diffusion. Hopefully you can spot that there are some similarities between gas exchange in the human lungs and the gills of the fish. Let's test what you've learned. Pause the video and try these questions and then press play when you want to mark them with me. Ready? 1A. Use the information shown to complete the second pie chart. So here we're looking at the composition of air breathed in to the composition of air breathed out and we're missing a value in the second one. Now the percentage needs to add up to 100 so we're just going to do 100 take away the values that we've been given. So it's 100 take away 84 and that gives us 16. B. Which process has happened in the lungs to change the composition of the air? This is gas exchange or gaseous exchange. 2. State how a large surface area is achieved for gaseous exchange in A. Humans. This is by having many alveoli in the lungs. And B. Fish. This is by having lots of gill filaments in the gills. All right, how did you do on the questions? The lungs work with the heart to deliver oxygen to your body cells. Click here to learn about the heart. And thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks and bye.